So um, they said today I look like crap. I do. You know, um, they said this was supposed to prove that I was faking that I'm ill. And that this was some great thing that they would have. Uh, they called it proprietary access or proprietary access to me. But by me doing all these videos and me showing you me, that that takes it away from them. The other thing about this that I wanted to let you know is that they said they wanted to get me so upset today that I say make it stop because they still follow me around. They still say everything out loud and pretend that it's going only to my head. It's not. I wanted to also warn you that they're talking about other people's business and they thought they could turn it around and make it seem like I was talking about other people's business, but I wouldn't know these things. So something they said happened, uh, probably, let me get the years now, probably in the, like, 1995, 1990, no, it had to be, like, 1995, maybe, couldn't have been 1996 or 1990, it definitely, it couldn't have been 1997, 1998, so maybe about 1995, they said someone I was friends with was doing something wrong, and that they told me. And they said I was crying when I was no longer this person's friend, but they got everything wrong about that situation. So I'm telling anybody who's connected to me, again, if you are in any way in involved with these people, they are telling the world your business. And I don't know if it's true or not. I know what they said about me isn't true, but I don't know. <laughs> if, if what they say about you is true. So I I said this out loud in the apartment. Go to the FBI, go to the police, tell law enforcement, because I think this is how they drag people down. They lie on people, or if they know the truth about them, they use it to um, drag them down. I don't know. So I'm warning anybody. If you were in any way involved with me, call the FBI, tell them this is happening. It's a this, these people aren't good people. They said they thought I would get so upset today and like say, make it stop. I wanted it to stop for from the time it began, but they don't listen. They think that they'll get away with it. I'm telling you, they're not going to get away with it. I'm certain now. Before I was like, well, maybe they will because they're rich. They have the means to do this. They had the means to break into my apartment, find things and try to distort what they found. They said that they had proof that I got a D in Spanish. I didn't get a D in Spanish. They looked at the, you know, when, when you register for a course, they tell you the courses you'll get and the days. And they looked at the days as a D, but that corresponds to a chart that tells you what days I had to attend co the course. Um, that's not my grade. And it says it on top. The other thing I wanted to tell you folks, because I want to tell you guys everything, you know. You know, they said I'm at the end of my life. And I think in some ways I am. I don't know if that means in terms of time or in terms of how I feel about my life. You know, I think my life went in different um, time frames. Not necessarily time, like a date, but time frames. Like in the beginning of my life, that's when I was learning about life. Then the middle part was when I was living life. I'm at the stage in my life, I'll call it a stage, where I am reflecting upon my life. And what's so sad about this is that they said that, you know, why would I be so honest with you folks? That's what reflection is. I can't honestly reflect upon my life if I'm not honest about it. So as I'm telling you these things, they said they wanted to keep me hidden because they feel like the ideas and the way I express myself throughout my life, they could repackage and give to someone else. I told you guys about the book. I told you about the people who would kind of listen to what I'm saying and then, you know, try to use it for themselves. The other reflection upon my life is they, you know, 
I've been fortunate in my life that before all of this horror happened to me, I was able to try things and do things. So they said, you know, when I worked at the boutique in 2016, a young man came in and he was kind of talking to me and he was talking about being a broker. And I said, you know, before the big bubble, you know, the dot-com bubble, like the late 90s, 2000s, I was able to open up a brokerage account, sit around, try out some companies, get invest in some stocks, sell some stocks. And it was something that was, to me, it was fun. I had a, at the time I had a tax guy who I used to go to in Manhattan who would do my tax and he recommended a stock. Unfortunately, that stock was horrible. It, it didn't work out, but I had invested in different stocks and had I held them, those stocks would have been profitable. I didn't hold them. So I had a chance to kind of sit around on a computer, invest in stocks, check, check the prices, buy, sell. And that's sort of like, you know, me, I was trying to be like a day trader. And that's what one of the, one of the things they talked about this morning, they were upset because they said, well, had you held some of the stocks, it would have been profitable, but you sold them, blah, blah, blah. So they said, well, you kind of failed at doing that. Listen, I don't look at it like that. I look at it. I had the opportunity to do it. If things had gone well for me, I probably would have gone back to doing that. I loved investing. I loved having the opportunity to research companies, figure out what I liked, what I didn't like, buy stock in the company, sell it. That was something I enjoyed doing. So they said, well, I mentioned it to that guy and they, they didn't believe I did it. Of course I did it. That's my point. I think as you guys get to know me, you can tell I am the type of person who will do what I think I would like to do as a, this is something else that I said, you know, this is something I wanted to do. So in their tell, in them saying that it proved that they weren't doing this all along because they would have known. That's my point. How, how did it come forward in their minds that they could make up that they were doing this all along when that was something, had they been doing it and mind controlling me, I'm using the hand quotes, they would have, if they had been mind controlling me, isn't that a a crime? That's my point. Like to me, this is them inserting themselves into my life to say they committed a crime. If I'm involved in a mind control project and you have access to information about stocks, that would be inside of training, trading. That's a crime. It doesn't make sense. All the things that I've done in my life are things that had they been involved in it would have been a criminal act. And as many times as I try to tell them that, it doesn't work. So I'm telling you folks this so that you can maybe, if you know these people, I'll call them that to be polite, you can explain to these people that that's a crime. The things that I am, I've done in my life aren't things that you we would all do together. Because if we all did it together, it would have to be registered. It would have to be, there are tax implications. There are legal implications. We don't all do everything together. The other thing I wanted to tell you folks, because I'm hoping to explain this in a way that you folks can warn people. So we have that part that's a criminal act. The other part that's a criminal act would be if I'm being mind controlled or illegally surveilled, and I'm trying to run a business where I get customer information into my possession, and these people are illegally invading my privacy, they would be illegally invading the privacy of customers. When I was going through this, one of their suggestions was, why don't you work at home for a business as opposed to trying to run my own business? That would be a crime. And that's what I'm explaining. Everything that I'm doing that they're trying to involve themselves in would make them criminally liable for invading my privacy and invading the privacy of customers. That's part of what I'm trying to explain. The other part of that is that it wouldn't make sense that somebody who has the experience and the know-how like they claim to would want me involved. 
unless there is a reason why they can't do it themselves. And I think those folks who get what I'm saying, I'll say it in plain English, they must have an issue that they can't do it themselves and they would want me to, they say latch on, no, no, no. They want me to be the front. That's a crime. I would have to be the front person. I don't want to be the front person for their criminal activity. I'm too old and I'm too sick. The last thing that I want to talk about, you know, since I'm talking about all this stuff is, um, you know, there's so much, there's just so much, um, in trying to make it sound like I was undesirable as a woman, not feminine enough, not attractive enough. They said that I was somebody who was insulting people behind their backs If I had been doing that, why would they wait until 2023 to accuse me of doing that? Wouldn't, you know, think about it. They said in in 1996, when I was a flight attendant, one of the older women that used to kind of hang out with us young girls had an intervention with me. That's not exactly what happened. We were as young girls hanging out and we're talking and being young girls. I would have been 22 she would have been much older than us. And I had another little friend and I think she was 22 or 20 when we were all young. And then there was another girl who could have been like in her twenties or whatever. So this is 1996 and we're all hanging out and we're getting on each other's nerves mutually. And that's my point. I think the way these people thought it would work was that in 2023, while I'm reflecting on my life, they would insert themselves into my reflection on my life and, and say, well, what about this? What about that? And that's part of this. It's as though they felt that they had, they they thought they had dirt on me. So during my reflection on my life, they would make it seem like there was an issue. I continued to hang out with these people until we no longer flew together. And that's my point. I think they wanted it to seem like I had all these horrible relationships and nobody cared about me. But I've documented on Twitter the all the, the thank you cards, all the reference letters, everything that I got. I think it seems odd to me that in 2023, this is an issue. Why wouldn't it have been a big issue in 1996? And that's part of what I'm saying. If they had been mind controlling me, then if any issue I had, I could blame them. And and I think that's what they wanted. They wanted me to say, well, everything I've I've ever done and accomplished was thanks to them, the good and the bad. No, they wouldn't want to take credit for mind control had I failed. That's my point. Nobody wants to take credit when you're doing something wrong. They want to take credit when you're doing something right. And, um, that's the sad part about it. So they wanted me to feel guilty for talking about my life experience. They said, well, you, if you had not told anyone about, you know, your, your being into stocks, then this wouldn't have happened. Had you not told anyone that you had a wonderful family, then this wouldn't have happened. Had you not, you know, and that's the point. So the last point about this is that men flirted with me when I was better looking and many years ago. So one of one of the stories I told the elementary school mate was that I was going to church and a priest kind of held my hand too long. And so she was like, "Uh oh, you know, so it happened on more than one occasion. And I kind of I think also I kind of developed a little bit of a crush on the priest. And I'm telling you folks that because, hey, why not? And I think that could have been part of what I'm telling you about life. You know, I love the idea that Pope Francis talks talks about human emotions. And I grew up in Catholic school. You guys know that. I told you that a million times. And I think what happens in human emotions is that we as human beings feel things. So did I, when I told my elementary school made about this this was years ago do I think I wasn't a child I was a grown woman and he's a grown man uh do I think that when she she responded she thought that 
maybe it was inappropriate, yeah, but it was a discussion. And that's something I always have. I have these discussions. If you listen to my videos and, you know, go over it, you'll see that I have discussions about emotions, life. My degrees in psychology, this is something I'm interested in, always have been. If people take it the wrong way, it's fine with me. I'm okay with it. So going back to the incident in 1996 when uh, the older woman kind of sat down with us and talked to us, did I mind? No, because that's that's part of that's part of life. Like this is all part of life. This is part of, and I hope we don't lose it. I think social media is pushing us away from this. But it's part of life. It's part of figuring out what we are as human beings. This is, I mean, these things, that's how we we developed as human animals. We're animals. We develop by having these exchanges, not only of ideas, but of emotions, of, of feelings, of thought. And if you take that away from us, you take away what makes us human and you take away what makes us animals. So going back to the thing I'm telling you with the priest, when I told the elementary schoolmate, she was like, oh, it must be. I was like, no, I don't think it's that. I think it was two human beings having a connection. That's it. Does that does it make it sexual? Does it make it emotional? Does it make it... I don't know. It makes it a connection. And that's completely human. It wasn't inappropriate. And that's what I'm explaining to this group. Every single interaction you have with another human being doesn't have to be put under a microscope. Sometimes it's an interaction. It's a connection. It's a moment. And why is it relevant today and wasn't relevant when it happened, which was years ago. And that's my point. It seems like these folks wanted to create so much drama and confusion at a time in my life when I should be reflecting upon my life, not having them lie about my life. The last point about that I would like to make, and I, I, w I hope to discuss this more, I'm grateful to the world that we're living in that there are still people willing to listen to other human beings about life and how human beings interact. Because I think, again, as we move further away from human connections and closer to using computers and cell phones and, and, and other things, not humans, things to communicate, we lose a lot of this. We lose people just looking into each other's eyes and talking and, and, and relating. As we lose that, we lose these, to me, these, these are moments that you can't buy. You can't spend money on this. You know, they talk about all sorts of things. No, you can't buy this. You can't. So what I think the elementary schoolmate wanted to do was create drama around that. And it shows you who I'm telling you that person became in my life. I can't have a connection with someone who takes my moments of connection and exploit them. It's exploitative. If I'm talking to anyone... Like, I, you know, you guys can come away from this video and talk about this to other people. But when you have a, a quiet moment with someone who you would want to develop a bond with, a trust with, and that person exploits it, then that's somebody who you can't have in your life. If something happens to me and I go to somebody who I think would be someone I can connect to and I say, oh, this happened and that person exploits it. I can't have that person in my life. And that's my point. I need to be able to have moments, connections, emotions with people in my life. So as I'm reflecting upon my life at this stage, 
and I'm telling you folks these things and we're doing it in a public way, it's designed for you folks to talk about it. No secrets. It's designed to say, boy, this this happens in life. And if it's happening to you, I hope you can talk about it. I hope that this is what I'm I'm trying to do. Not only reflecting upon my life, but doing it in a public way so that these public conversations can continue to happen. And we don't we don't stop this. We don't allow computers or technology to stop these moments where we talk about things. So I think I'm going to end this video on that. Usually I like to, you know, kind of go over everything, but I think I went over it enough. Okay. So again, if you watch this, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've had similar experiences, just, you know, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.